okay. It's time for the children's message laboratory, and I invite children, young and old, whatever your age, to move up close so you can see what's going on here today. And today, I want to begin by sharing a story with you, a story about when I was, well, around many of your ages, maybe 10, 11, 12, the exact age, I couldn't tell you for sure, but I'm thinking it was around 10 or 11. And my parents had a, uh, a game that they liked to play out of doors. It was a backyard game that they would play when people came over, which was a regular basis. Uh, pretty much every week when it was nice outside, they'd go out and they'd play this game. It was called a game called, a game called Jarts. And I don't know that they have that still today, but it was these darts, giant darts that you'd throw trying to hit, kind of like a horseshoe, trying to hit a hoop that you'd try and get it to on the other end of the yard. And man, I watched them play that game and the fun they had, and I wanted to play that game so, so badly. But my parents said, no, Paul, that game is too dangerous because there were some really sharp uh, objects on that game that I could have gotten hurt with. But one day, while my daddy was at work and my mom was busy, and my friend Sean came over from next door, and we began, we're bumming around the house, and then went outside, and we're trying to figure out what we can do, and I said, I got it, let's play jarts. And so I grabbed the box, and we took the stuff out, and you know, we had a different version that we wanted to play. So we took those darts and we began to aim at the trees in the backyard to see if we could make them stick into the tree. And we had fun with that. And then we threw them up as high as we could to see how high we could throw them. We had fun with that. And one time it came down on the cement and one of those darts broke. And my heart was racing really fast because now what's going to happen? And so we quickly packed it all up into the box nice and neat and put it back in the garage right where it was and we went off and we did something else. Well, come a week from then or so, my parents had some friends over and they wanted to play jarts. And so they went, my dad, before the people got there, he went out to check the garage and to get things set up and he discovered that one of them was broken. And so he called in his most patient voice that I can remember, each one of his children by name, Daniel, Paul, Christina, Rachel. And he asked us, what happened to the game? And I said, I don't know. I don't know. And my brother and sister said, we don't know. We don't have any idea. We haven't played that game. We're not allowed to play that game. And he said, well, he tell you what, why don't you all go downstairs and you think about what happened to the game. And so, eventually, I worked really hard to get my little sister in trouble. And I told her that she should just tell what happened, that she broke the game so that we can all get outside and go play again. And my heart was racing so fast. Has that ever happened to you? I knew what I had done, and I didn't want to tell. And finally, after a long time, what seemed like eternity, I ended up going upstairs and talking to my mom and dad and telling them that I broke the dart. I wanted to tell you this picture in a little story here. I'm going to draw something here on this piece of paper. And this is, well, you know what that is. That's a heart. And that's something like my heart when I was telling this story. And as I'm telling this story to my, to my parents and to my siblings, there's a couple things that I did that was really, really wrong, right? One, I wanted what wasn't mine. Want what's not mine. What else did I do? You can tell me probably just as well as I what, it, what I did. One, two, I, I took what wasn't mine to be taken. I stole it. What my parents had said not to do, I did. I disobeyed. 
my parents. You may not be able to read that writing, but it's, it's what, what's happening within me, right? I also then told some serious lies about my sister, about myself. I wanted wasn't mine, and I worked out a way to get it. I stole it. I disobeyed my parents. I told lie after lie after lie to try and uh, make sure that I was not in trouble. And finally, what this all told me was that I was putting me over God and others. Because I wanted to do what I wanted to do, even though I knew it was wrong. Have you ever done something you known is wrong? Have you ever done something like me that you've known is wrong? I got to tell you, when I confessed to my parents what I had done, It was something like a giant relief that just overcame me, that overwhelmed me with, like, thankfulness. And I realized at that moment, at age, what, 9, 10, 10, 11, 12, what God does for us because God so loves us. He takes our heart and all the sin that we've done and through the power of His Spirit... His love, he begins to take all that sin away so that our hearts are clean and we can begin to live the new way that life has, that God has called us to live through Jesus. We have a clean heart because God so loves us. A little story to remind you how important it is to follow God's ways, to follow Jesus in the way we live with our brothers and sisters, our moms and dads, our grandma, grandpas, our neighbors, our friends, because God loves you and God has forgiven you. And God has made a way for you to live a life of love for others, just as you are loved by God. Would you pray with me? Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you, God, for forgiving us. Help me, God. To follow Jesus, to be honest, to be caring, to be loving, to be kind, to forgive, to follow Jesus every day in his name, amen, amen. We'll see you next week.